Joplin's done a little bit of research into the history of flamenco starting from the 1700s. And that's when we have the first flamenco styles. We, we're looking into that and these were uh, seguirillas, tonas, romances, serranas, polos, um, uh, all, yeah, caña. So these are the styles that we start looking at the, in that period. After that we have, uh, actually I think I mentioned in the last part, uh, first episode that flamenco shows up as a word flamenco in the 1700s in a book called Cartas Marruecas. Before flamenco there was not an uh, actual uh, flamenco word, it was called like Cantes Andaluces, so the word flamenco, flamenco shows up in those um, books as a word flamenco. And then, um, and then we have to mention that um, the first known flamenco singer, very important, very, very important, and hopefully some people that are interested in history, uh, in other episodes we can talk about El Planeta, and that was born in Cadiz in uh, the 1789, and this is the first uh, kind of known cantaor. He made, he created his own seguirilla style. Like I hope I can add it into this episode so people can hear how seguirillas sounded at this time. And he wrote the li li lyrics, and it was all about his dad being in jail for real. Today we know flamenco as cuadro flamenco, which involves guitar, singer, palmas, even sometimes cajon now, and dancing. So we always have five players. In the 1700s, was there flamenco guitar? No, no. So, I almost can say that no, no, no. So how Maybe would that have evolved, know. Gary? Like how would it have evolved? Just as poetry and, and lyrics in cante, or? Well, I think it was, it came from the, mostly at that period, it was mostly happening in very private situations, oh, mostly oh, with the, mostly among gypsy families and uh, without any money being involved for the most part, although there might have been some private fiestas that the, some of the richer people who liked Flamenco might have known, might have paid for to hire artists. But, I think it was mostly happening with the families, and a lot of those families, uh, there was no guitar, really. I mean, I think it might have been a rare instance of having guitar, but most, for the most part, there wouldn't have been guitar. Yeah, right? well, they were all the kind of guitars, like uh, the, the laud, 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 how do you pronounce that? Well, that guitar, that's the way they kind of uh, um, accompany some of the... Could be. Songs or okay. When I look at that, fandango in my mind is a Spanish folk dance, whereas Sigiria, Caña, Tonas, Polo would be more flamenco. I don't see Solea anywhere on your list. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. As somebody who's always known Solea to be the root trunk of the tree that breeds all of the other palos in flamenco. Like this is very surprising to me, yeah. Because Kanya looks like Kanya precedes. Yeah, so, and yeah. even romances also. Romances, mm -hmm. uh, all those are so, uh, preceding Solea. Solea comes after like seventy five years wow. after in the actual uh, second period from uh, eighteen hundreds to. Uh, 1900s. So how would they have performed all of these? You think it was knocking on the table and palmas? It would have been palmas and, and... And remember that before this period also, yeah, before this period we have Epoca Bulera and all that, and that's another story. Mm -hmm. Before, before uh, all this uh, um, landmarks that we have here with Anya, Segrilla, we had other things happening before that, like for example, Buleria comes from the also, there's another theory that comes from the word bolero, which that's why it's called boleri or boleria, comes from bolero and that was, you know, before this period where people were, or during this period or a little bit before, when they <coughs> dancing in pairs uh, from La Escuela Bolera. Talk. To bring this back to how we view flamenco 
in the outer world would be we need to actually distinguish between what is Spanish and then what is Gitano because in Canada we can just easily get those all mixed up, right? Because it is very important to know the roots. So in my mind, there are Spanish dances and Spanish songs that originate from all of the primary cities. So Sevillana comes from Seville. Malagueña comes from Malaga. Fandango comes from Huelva. So the Rondeña comes from Ronda. And so, but they have actually Spanish origins. And so when we talk about flamenco and when we talk about flamenco buleria originating from Jerez de la Frontera, these roots are very different because they originate from the gypsies originally, which have, they have a whole other language, right, Gary? Yeah, the, the Spanish uh, Rome or gypsies have uh, a language called Caló. Which uh, nowadays there aren't too many mm, gypsies in Spain that can speak calo, pure calo. In other words, say whole sentences, whole paragraphs in calo. It's mostly some words that are interspersed with Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you know, I don't know what the average vocabulary would be of a person nowadays. A younger person, probably not too. You know, maybe. 100, 150 words of Calo, and the rest would all be Spanish. Mm -hmm. There was one person that was teaching Calo, actually, to the, to the younger gypsies in Jerez, which is the father of Pelé and, and Chiqui. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he was one of the few people that could actually speak whole sentences, whole paragraphs of Calo. Mm -hmm. 